Hey there YouTube lovers, my name is BB8 and today we are going to do a concept video for Boo Detective Spooky. Y you are probably wondering what this is, like for people, for the people who weren't here, which I probably bet none of you were at the time since this is a throwback to 2019, sort of, because at the time, I did the Nintendo Switch Lite Direct video, I didn't have that many subscribers. But I thought, I love the idea so much, I thought, three years after I uploaded that fake Direct, I thought, why not come back to this idea? And without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? So the setting for Boo Detective Spooky would be called Mushroom Kingdom Noir. Mushroom Kingdom Noir would be the setting of Boo Detective Spooky, taking inspiration from 1930s New York, Gotham City from The Batman that came out this year, adding some neon elements from that version of Gotham and some ghost house elements from the Mario games. The city would call home to inhabitants such as Toads, Shy Guys, Goombas, Boos, Co Koopa Troopers and Ninjis, which would appear as background characters all wearing 1930s style clothing and familiar characters will be taking on unusual 1930s style roles with 1930s style makeovers that will be appearing in the game as well so the places of interest within the game is detective spooky's agency a major location within the game this is where Detective Spooky works in a detective's office. He keeps all the cases he has been involved with either, either being solved or unsolved. And Detective Spooky can come here whenever he isn't freely roaming the city to solve story cases, side cases, or amiibo cases. The Mushroom Kingdom Noir Metro. This would be a transportation system, and this helps Detective Spooky get around the map. And when he doesn't have access to his car, which he does destroy frequently without within the game, and the Daily Mushroom News Building. This building is where the Daily Mushroom News is hosted by Peach. Daisy and Rosalina. All three of them getting 1930s makeovers just for this. A side case and amiibo cases involving Peach, Daisy and Rosalina would come later in the game. And Detective Spooky will have a portable radio in hand with him at all times. So if you want to listen to the Daily Mushroom News while roaming the city, just click the R button. The Cooper Corporation building, being a tall building in the middle of the Mushroom Kingdom Noir, owned by the city's kingpin, Bowser, which the Cooper Corporation building will be an, an important location within the game. Because at the end of a story case within the game, you would have to fight him. And the Mushroom Kingdom Noir City Hall is the hall where Mayor Boo usually is throughout the game. And this building would be inspired by a 1930s city hall design with a bit of Mario Ghost House touch to it. The main character would be called 
Detective Spooky, obviously. Detective Spooky is the most reliable detective in Mushroom Kingdom Noir. Whenever a case needs to be solved, he will solve it. The gimmicks and abilities he has is the magnifying glass is where Detective Spooky holds a magnifying glass with him, which means you can find extra details around the city, such as files which will unlock new cases Detective Spooky can solve. The gun, the game, will be a Peggy 12 because Detective Spooky, as well as Bowser, will end up wielding guns within the game, making Boo Detective Spooky the first Peggy 12 or teen rated Mario game. And Detective Spooky would wield a 1930s style pistol that detectives may have. The radio is where Detective Spooky has a portable radio with him at all times, so when R is pressed, you can listen to the Daily Mushroom News, and you can listen to some music as recorded by Pauline, but doesn't sound like John Pop Superstar from Super Mario Odyssey, but would be originally composed to f give the 1930s style to it. And you can listen to it while you roam the city and solve cases. Spectrum Prince is a move Detective Spooky can use by blowing smoke out of his pipe, but not just any smoke. This is called Spectrum Smoke. A special type of smoke which makes it easier to reveal footprints which may come in useful trying to solve some cases. Spectrum Sprint is an ability Detective Spooky can use to sprint a bit faster while chasing enemies. And the camera, this isn't a photo mode. This is used by Detective Spooky, which makes it easier for him to solve cases by using photos he has taken for reference. And for the controls, you can press R to turn the radio on or switch channels, press ZL to wield the gun, press ZR to fire at the gun, you can press L to use the magnifying glass, press X to use spectrum prints, rapidly press B to use spectrum sprint, you can press A to interact with people throughout the city, and you can press Y to use the camera. For the cases, cases are like levels throughout the game where Detective Spooky has to go around Mushroom Kingdom Noir to solve them. Each case within the game lasts about a 20 to 30 minute average if you are on the moderate difficulty. And this also depends on how long it takes to solve as well. There is around 32 story cases, 80 side cases, 29 amiibo cases from the Super Smash Bros. series and Super Mario series amiibo, and 100 cases from the Boo Detective Spooky amiibo cards, giving us a total of 200 and 41 cases throughout the game. The story cases, this type, would connect the main story of the game, and the story would span out throughout 32 cases, spanning throughout four acts. The side cases, these cases are not associated with the story in any form, but these can be obtained with completing specific story cases throughout the game, by talking to citizens or finding files throughout the city. Amiibo cases. Amiibo cases can be unlocked by just tapping any Mario character from the Super Smash Bros. series, the Super Mario series Amiibo, or 
the Boo Detective Spooky Amiibo cards to unlock cases themed after that character and any Amiibo of a repeat character such as Mario who has both an Amiibo for Super Smash Bros and the Super Mario Bros series will both have different cases when you tap them in. So once you've tapped in the Amiibo, the case is in your archive forever. You won't need to tap the Amiibo again to replay the case. So the length of the game... The length of the game would actually depend on which difficulty you choose in the game. And if you own the Amiibo to complete the Amiibo cases or not. I did do a lot of maths to figure out how long the game is for each difficulty with or without Amiibo. So the story with on easy mode would take 5 hours, 19 minutes and 59 seconds. On moderate, it would take 10 hours, 39 minutes and 59 seconds to 16 hours average the story mode when it on hard mode it would take about an average of 21 hours 19 minutes and 59 seconds to 26 hours 40 minutes and the story in nightmare mode would take about 32 to 48 hours if you are a completionist, it is going to get lengthy. If you are a completionist without Amiibo, on easy mode, it would take 18 hours and 40 minutes. If you're a completionist with Amiibo, it would take 40 hours, 9 minutes and 59 seconds. If you are a completionist on moderate without Amiibo, it would take 37 hours and 20 minutes to 56 hours. If you're a completionist with Amiibo on moderate, it would take 80 hours, 19 minutes and 59 seconds to 120 hours and 30 minutes. If you're a completionist on hard without Amiibo, it would take 74 hours and 40 minutes to 93 hours, 19 minutes and 59 seconds on hard mode with amiibo it would take you 160 hours 39 minutes and 59 seconds to 200 hours and 50 minutes it but if you are a completionist on nightmare it would only take you about 112 to 160 hours to complete but if you are a completionist on nightmare mode with amiibo you're in for a treat because this is quite lengthy it would take 241 hours to 361 hours and 30 minutes average but if you are a completionist with all the difficulties each with individual save files with the amiibo it would take an average of 522 hours, 9 minutes and 57 seconds to 618 hours and 20 minutes. The, you are going to have to grind the game a lot if you want to complete the game. So for the story, the story of Boo Detective Spooky would be be split into four different acts. The first three acts having 10 cases each and the final act only having two cases to conclude the story. Act 1 being called the Piranha Caper of the City Sewers. The first act begins with a close-up of a newspaper and a radio playing. The radio plays the daily mushroom news as the camera pans to Detective Spooky with a pipe in his mouth. The news reports that the city 
sewers have been infested with piranha plants. The fact that the piranha plants have made their way up toilets and drain holes and at least five citizens have gone missing going into the sewers to do some sewage work but never came out and detective spooky in act one has to solve who is responsible for the piranha plant infestation and at the 10th case of act one you find out that the one responsible for the piranha plant infestation is pt piranha and at the back half of the 10th act no not the 10th act the 10th case that's a spelling mistake you will fight pt piranha once you have done that pt piranha gets taken into custody by the mushroom kingdom noir police department and once the cutscene finishes a black card that says act one the piranha keeper of the city sewers and a huge stamp animation saying closed is stamped onto the case which wraps up act one act two the bar bomb blackout would be the second act which would begin with a news report just happening and all of a sudden a blackout happens out of nowhere not only does the entire city witness it but detective spooky does as well detective spooky in act two has to solve how the mushroom kingdom noir blackout happened and who is responsible for causing the blackout at the 10th phase you get the power back and running again not only to find out who was responsible for the blackout, but to find a power plant full of bar bombs all over the place. The one responsible for the blackout was none other than King Bar Bomb. But in Boo Detective Spooky, he is known as Operator Bar Bomb. An operator who works at the city power plant. You fight Operator Bar Bomb inside the power plant as bar bomb keeps chucking bar bombs but you shoot them with your gun until operator bar bomb runs out of bar bombs you corner him and detective spooky explains what operator bar bomb had been doing to his boss and the Mushroom Kingdom, Noir Police Department, with Operator Bob on behind bars, it then shows a black card again, saying Act 2, the Bob on blackout, as the word closed gets stamped over it as the act ends. And for Act 3, the fault in our mushrooms, I know this is a terrible pun, but it is the best I can come up with. The third act begins on the streets of the Mushroom Kingdom. Noir. And it shows a toad with a big coat, a hat and shades handing a random citizen a mystery mushroom in exchange for coins. So the random citizen handed the coins to the toad and the toad hand them the mushroom not knowing what would happen to them next the news then broadcasts that 35 victims have fallen asleep on the streets all of a sudden and they have no idea what's going on detective spooky in act three has to solve who the mushroom kingpin is at the 10th case of the act you are led to a warehouse full of mushrooms and then you see a mysterious goomba like figure loading a load of mushrooms and a body of, into the trunk of the car being the body that was the victim of who 
the toad actually was at the beginning of Act 3. And it would reveal that the body was actually Mario's. The car leaves as the Goomba turns around, and the mysterious Goomba-like figure is revealed to be Goomboss, but in Boo Detective Spooky, Goomboss is known as the Goomba Kingpin. The master dealer of the Mushroom Kingdom Noir. Detective Spooky catches him as he has a car chase with the Goomba Kingpin. In this boss fight, he has to shoot down the tires on the Goomba Kingpin's car in order to stop the car from moving. And the fight carries on even though that you have successfully stopped the car. And you then defeat the Goomba Kingpin who has who gets taken into Mushroom Kingdom Noir Police Department custody and it then shows a black card saying Act 3, The Fault in Our Mushrooms as the word closed gets stamped over it as the act ends. And for the final act being The Criminal to Rule Them All Part 1. And just as Detective Spooky thought that all the mayhem going on in the Mushroom Kingdom the while was over, the news came on and shared two stories that would change everything. It was announced that P.T. Piranha, Operator Barbomb, and the Goomba Kingpin were all bailed out by a mysterious someone. The other story is that Mayor Boo was missing. Detective Spooky blew his pipe too hard in shock, not expecting the two big news stories that would come out that day. The smoke from his pipe revealed mysterious footprints were in his office. The footprints connected to his file drawers and it looked like someone had broken into Detective Spooky's office during the hours where Detective Spooky wasn't working and literally came in, stole a file and just left. Detective Spooky checked his case drawer to check if anything was missing and three files were missing. The three case files for P.T. Piranha, Operator Barbomb and the Goomba Kingpin had all been stolen. Detective Spooky followed the footprints onto the street and noticed that the trail stopped when he was approaching the curb. The mysterious someone must have hopped into a car to make the footprints untraceable. Detective Spooky takes either the metro or his car, depending on how the player gets around the map, to drive to the Mushroom Kingdom Noir prison. Once he arrives at the prison, he blows his pipe again to check if the mysterious someone got off here and the footprints were actually a perfect match. Detective Spooky enters the prison and talks to the staff to check if anything was suspicious. And they told him that a Cooper Trooper used the case files to bail them out. It was then revealed that a Cooper Trooper snuck into Detective Spooky's office during after hours to steal the case files. Detective Spooky blew on his pipe again to check if the footprints led to anywhere and it led to the guest restroom within the prison and it showed the footprints of them going in but didn't show footprints of them coming out. So Detective Spooky looks around the restroom to check if anything unusual was happening and he spots the case files the Cooper Trooper stole were actually ripped up and soaked in order to get rid of the evidence that a criminal organization bailed them out. 
Detective Spooky has another close look in the restroom and notices a metal can. The metal can had powder inside. The powder was used to make the criminal's footprints untraceable by Detective Spooky's spectrum print ability. And as Detective Spooky left the prison, he noticed something wasn't right. And he noticed that the footprints weren't traced, but there was asphalt marks on the road that could actually be traced. It turns out, after they left the prison, they sped around the city to do what they needed to do. And Detective Spooky checked the metal can that he took out of the bathroom and checked the label and it said that the effect would only last for 15 minutes. So that is probably the reason why they sped around the city. So that, that they, when they were dropped off at certain points, that their footprints wouldn't be traced by the Spectrum Prints ability. So Detective Spooky followed the asphalt trail around the city to check where they got off. He blew his pipe the entire time he was following the trail and noticed some footprints going into a power plant. Detective Spooky then questioned himself to why someone would go to a power plant but the entire city didn't black out this time. So he went inside and checked what was going on and all the employees and operators were all asleep. He had a look around the building to check if anything was suspicious and noticed that the fire sprinkler fluid that activated when the fire alarm goes off smells exactly like the mushrooms that the Goomba Kingpin was dealing with. It appeared that the mushroom had been grinded and put in to the sprinkler fluid, which means explaining why everybody had fallen asleep all of a sudden. Detective Spooky kept following the footprints around the power plant and noticed that there was bar bombs everywhere. Detective Spooky figured out that Operator Bar Bomb sabotaged the power plant to make sure that he could cause another blackout and then the news came on and Detective Spooky's portable radio, the news was saying that there was a blackout at City Hall. Detective Spooky had no clue how to operate the power plant and the only problem was that Operator Bar Bomb put everyone who works at the facility to sleep. So Detective Spooky keeps following the asphalt trail, which in fact does lead to City Hall coincidentally. And the footprints were shown going inside the City Hall. But the major problem is that there wasn't one trail, there was three trails, each leading to a different room in the city hall. The Goomba Kingpin's footprints led into the kitchen and yet again smelled like the mushroom operator Bar Bomb had used to put the entire power plant to sleep. He must have put the mushroom in the mayor's dinner which the mayor went to bed that he would fall asleep for longer than usual so detective spooky checked the rest of the city hall to check if anything was suspicious he blew his pipe and noticed that pt piranha's footprints were actually leading into mayor boo's bedroom he went into the mayor's bedroom only to see that, that the mayor wasn't there. And Detective Spooky 
blew his pipe and noticed three sets of footprints coming out of the room. The mayor isn't just missing, he got kidnapped. And just as Detective Spooky was about to leave the city hall, giant green vines all grew all over the city hall, similar to how the museum in Ghostbusters 2 was actually covered in psycho magnotheric slime, which Detective Spooky was left trapped inside. And part one of the final act was concluded, and this cliffhangs into part two. So for the final act, part two, being called the criminal to rule them all part two. The second part of the final act picks up where part one left off. Detective Spooky is trapped inside the city hall and needs to find a way out so he can conclude the case. He looks around to see if anything could help him across the city hall and he tries to fire his gun but unfortunately he is out of bullets and can't use his gun at all. Detective Spooky blows his pipe to check if they left anything behind and he follows the Cooper Trooper's footprints and he sees a gun that the Cooper Trooper had dropped which had only two bullets inside so if you screw up it's game over. Detective Spooky lands the bullet on the vine and manages to escape the city hall. He blows on his pipe and walks around the building and notices that P.T. Piranha did three laps around the building to plant three sets of green goblin like mines around the building but only difference from green goblins mines is that they can be decimated remotely which suggests that P.T. Piranha waited for Detective Spooky to be in the building before setting them off. The three sets of minds contained three different behaviors. One would cover the entire building with vines which can only be taken out with one shot. One surrounded the building with pipes that had piranha plants in them and the last set would add a second coat with piranha creepers from Super Mario 3D World around them. Detective Spooky followed the asphalt trail until it its end at the one place he didn't think the trail would end at. The Cooper Corporation building. The asphalt tracks leading here added it all up. P.T. Piranha, Operator bob and the Goomba Kingpin were actually working for another Kingpin all along. The events of the entire game were building up to this. So Detective Spooky was then faced in the lobby by a whole bunch of Cooper Troopers and Goombas who work for the Cooper Corporation. Detective Spooky has to work his way up the building to reach the big guy himself. But the elevator, as Detective Spooky works his way up, stops at certain floors. And at those floors are individual boss fights for P.T. Piranha, Operator bob and the Goomba Kingpin working differently than they previously occurred. And once all of them have been defeated, he makes his way up to the big man himself. He enters an office with a chair facing the other direction. The room had a cage with Mayor Boo still asleep in it. The big man himself was revealed to be 
Bowser wearing a suit, tie and glasses with a stylish haircut and a cigar in his mouth to make him fit the 1930s Kingpin vibe. The Bowser fight is split into two phases. The first phase has you fighting Bowser wielding two AK-47 like weapons. And once the first phase is complete, it shows Bowser flying out of the window made of glass and he plummets onto the ground and just as the Mushroom Kingdom Noir Police Department scattered across the building and arrested P.T. Piranha Operator bob and the Goomba Kingpin all at the same time and just as Bowser was about to be arrested he chuckled. He then grabbed a police officer by the neck and threw him as he hopped into his getaway vehicle. And this kicks off phase two of the final boss. The second phase involves the same Koopa Trooper that bailed out PT Piranha, Operator bob and the Goomba Kingpin that also stole the files from Detective Spooky's office, being Bowser's getaway driver, as he as Bowser stands on top of the car with two AK-47-like weapons, as he used in the first phase against Detective Spooky. You, of course, have to shoot not only the tires like in the Goomba Kingpin's boss fight, but you have to finish off the engine as well. And when phase two is over, Bowser's car explodes. And with Bowser arrested, it then cuts to three weeks later. Detective Spooky is in a coffee shop, drinking coffee and reading a newspaper. The newspaper confirms that Bowser has gone to life in prison with a really expensive bail, which would make it impossible for anyone to bail them out. And the screen fades to black one last time as the it says, the final act, the criminal to rule them all, and it stamps closed. Over it, as the final act is concluded. The credits roll shortly after, and when the credits are finished, it then plays a scene with Detective Spooky in his office, listening to the news, which announces that Chief Kong, a high-level criminal that had been bailed out of DK City Prison, and as Detective Spooky leaves his office and goes to solve more, more cases, it then shows a close-up of a file saying Boo Detective Spooky will return, leaving the door open for DLC or a sequel. For the Amiibo, the Amiibo tie-in with Boo Detective Spooky will feature one series of Amiibo cards, which will feature a hundred. There would be a total of four series planned for Boo Detective Spooky, Series 1 to tie in with the game's launch, and Series 2, 3, and 4 to tie in with the DLC. An Amiibo figure of Detective Spooky would be planned as well, standing at a height of 4.5 inches being a bit bigger than the Boo Amiibo that did release alongside Mario Party Star Rush, and would glow in, do in the dark similar to the Boo Amiibo. The Detective Spooky Amiibo figure would have an ability called Case Assist. Tap the Amiibo in up to three times a case in order to get help in the areas you're stuck in. For the DLC, 
Boo, Detective Spooky, would end up getting DLC in the structure of Spider-Man, the city that never sleeps. The first DLC would release one year after Boo Detective Spooky and would span the three waves out by six months each. So wave three would release one year after wave one. All three waves will consist of the detective's pass, even though each wave can be bought individually. Unlike the expansion passes offered within Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack, Boo Detective Spooky, the detective's pass will not be featured within Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack due to the multiplayer not being involved within the game. But free quality of life updates will be added to the game within the year before wave one drops so the detective's pass itself would cost $19.99 and each wave of the detective's pass would feature a new semi-open world city map you can explore similar to Mushroom Kingdom Noir a brand new story scenario a hundred new cases to solve, 23 story cases, and 77 side cases, with some new gimmicks and abilities for each map. So the first wave being DK City, DK City would take us to the Boo Detective Spookies equivalent to DK Island, being a jungle themed city which has a jungle themed structure unlike Mushroom Kingdom Noir but still keeping the 1930s feel to it just to stay true to the base game and the city will be inhabited by Diddy Kong like monkeys which this DLC pack you would be able to buy on its own for $7.99 the second wave being Frost Home. Frost Home would end up not being equivalent to a location we already know from the Mario games, but would end up being a snow themed city with Mario 64 penguins, blue Goombas, and Koopa Troopers with light blue shells being inhabitants. Frost Home, you'd also be able to buy individually for $7.99. And for the final wave, being Oasis Sarasa, this city will take inspiration from deserts, Indian culture, Sarasa Land from Super Mario Land, and Super Mario Bros. 2. This city will have inhabitants such as ninjis, shy guys, birdos, and lackey twos. Daisy will be involved in, with a side case in this DLC due to her taking a trip down to the Oasis Sarasa only because her first game was actually Super Mario Land which did feature Sarasa Land. Which I do think for $7.99 each. I do think the Detective's Pass is sort of a better deal. Because in total, if you bought them all individually, it would cost more than the Detective's Pass costs. So the release structure, Boo Detective Spooky would end up releasing on both Nintendo Switch and Nintendo Switch 2, but will rely on the same cartridge. But with the only difference is between the two is that the game will be optimized for Nintendo Switch 2. And the way I see them taking the game is I would see the game 
being announced at E3 around 16 months before the game's launch. Just to give the game a bit of time to catch a bit of anticipation before the game actually launches. Because there have been problems with um, games getting announced like too soon. Like within under six months bef before its release. And if Boo Detective Spooky, if it were to exist, had two E3s to catch anticipation, it could do well in sales, but wouldn't target to children. And the game would show up at the E3 after its reveal and would end up getting a trailer in the September Nintendo Direct which would end up revealing that Boo Detective Spooky would end up getting its own Nintendo Direct the week after around a month before the game's launch. So I would see the game launching around mid to late October. So guys, what did you think of Boo Detective Spooky? I do think, in my opinion, Boo, as a character, would fit well for a detective story in the Mario universe. And hopefully we do end up getting more Mario spin-offs. Probably creating some new original characters out of it. Kind of like what Boo Detective Spooky would do if it were to exist. I will talk about a Bowser spin-off in the future, which I am hoping to do it. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss another concept video like this one. And I will see you all in a future concept video. BB-8 out.